Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our Q&A for May part two, and we got some spicy questions, including 5090 being delayed, and the RTX 5080, is it being super disappointing in terms of its overall performance? We'll also talk about whether or not 1440p gaming is actually dying right now and everybody's leaving for 4K. And we'll cover all of your other PC building questions. If you get value out of this video, give it a like, because it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Micro Center has 26 US store locations with new stores opening in 2024. Micro Center's May top deals are insane, like this Ryzen 7800X 3D combo with mid-range B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of fast, DDR5 RAM for just $479. Or grab this powerful mid-range combo with the i5-12600KF Z690 motherboard and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM for just $249. Check out the great deals using the links in the video description. Let's start off with what's coming down the pike, CPUs, GPUs, other things. Sajewski's asked, do I think we'll see any new monitors or PC hardware in addition to the CPUs and GPUs at CompuTech coming, you say next month. It's actually only a couple weeks away now. You know, several manufacturers dropped new monitors earlier this year but perhaps they got something cooking. You want to know fans, cases, all kinds of cool stuff out there. Dual chamber cases. You're curious if I've heard buzz on anything else. Tease. But let's start off with the CPUs and GPUs first. And I will get to that other stuff in just a moment because I do think there's some fascinating stuff going, including maybe 1440p is dead already and it's time to move to 4K. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's talk about the GPUs. Let's start off with the RTX 5090 and the RTX 5080. Now, earlier, we were expecting the 5090, the RTX 5090 to come first. Then we got news that the 5080 is actually going to come first. And now we're getting some additional news between the last episode of the Q&A and this one, which is that, in fact, not only is the 5080 coming first, it's likely going to push back the entire launch of the Blackwell architecture for NVIDIA, probably into the fall, probably into the fall. Maybe they'll do something sooner. We'll have to wait and see. There's a reason for that. There's a AI ban that's in place right now that the US government has put in place on anything that could go to China or other parties that could then re-export things to China. And the RTX 4090, if you recall, this is why the prices got out of hand. You couldn't find them in stock because they rushed all the 4090s into China just ahead of the ban going into effect to sell those things at super huge value, right? Super huge amounts of money. And Nvidia realizes that, hey, if we can't sell the 4090 into China, we're not going to be able to sell the 5090 for sure. That should be even more powerful to it. So they're like, okay, we dominate the China landscape in terms of gaming GPUs out there. And a lot of folks might see it as a bigger front if we launch the 5090 first globally, except in China, except in China, where we're not allowed to launch it because the U.S. State Department, right, the U.S. government, won't allow us to ship them in. So what we're going to do, we don't want to offend that market. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a global launch. It's going to be the 5080 first. And that way they're like, yay, we got the 5080. And then we'll launch the 5090. But unfortunately, the board partners, they weren't ready for the 5080 to be launched just yet. They weren't ready. Most board partners were expecting the 5080 launch to be much further out. And they were preparing for the 5090 launch. So this decision by them in order to kind of not offend a, a very huge market out there, China I mean, it makes a lot of business sense to me, honestly, especially when you don't expect any high-end competition from AMD and you're kind of just, you're doing this basically because your AI decisions are driving the architectures faster, not the gaming decisions out there, right? Because that's where they're making most of their money. They're making truckloads of money in AI right now, NVIDIA is, and they're worried about other people, specifically AMD, catching up to them in terms of AI. So they're accelerating all their architectures. And if they accelerate the AI architectures, well, the gaming GPUs are also based on those architectures. So the gaming GPUs will also have to come out a little bit faster. But NVIDIA doesn't really care because AI is making them like this much money and their gaming revenues like this. And so they've completely flipped. They've become in Jensen's words, the CEO of NVIDIA's words, an AI company. They're no longer a GPU company. So they're basically going to launch the 5080 first, so they can have a global launch that includes China. And as a result, I don't know what will get uh, announced from them on June 2nd, which is when the announcement's going to happen. Probably a tease to it, probably something. But it's also possible that they'll push off that announcement to, you know, sometime in the fall, just before they launch it and kind of do their own thing. Obvious that they're really eager to make a lot of AI announcements and that AI architecture, again, the gaming architecture is based on it too. So it just seems 
kind of makes sense that they're gonna announce it all at once, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of gaming monitors, we got a ton of new announcements at CES, which was in January in Las Vegas. We were actually there. We were able to see a lot of this really super cool stuff, but most of those gaming monitors were OLED and they were either 1440p, 360 hertz with one 480 hertz out there by Asus, or, or they were 4K 240 hertz and they were generally about 32 inches in size. I suspect we'll probably get a couple more of those monitors announced, but a lot of those monitors are starting to make it their way to market. I've seen reviews on a number of these things that we are actually able to see at CES. I was actually able to mess around with them at the Gigabyte booth, at the MSI booth, at Asus's booth. I will say some of these monitors, the price points that they're driving are insane. 360 hertz, 1440p, for like $750 is crazy. That is a crazy price. Where if you just look a couple of years ago, that would have been like a two or $3,000 product. Easy, easy. And I will say, I know a lot of folks out there like 1440p gaming is the future. I'm gonna tell you, I think 1440p gaming is actually the past. I think we're living in 1440p gaming right now, but the future is a 4K future. Why do I say that? Well, if you look at the mid range of GPUs in this generation, RX 7800 XT, the RTX 4070 Super, those two cards, very easily drive about 60 FPS at 4K across a wide range of titles at super high details in all the latest titles. You know, 12 gigs of VRAM, probably not quite as much as you like at 4K on the 4070 Super. And I know I've been, you know, hammering that GPU for a lack of VRAM at $600, come on, 600 bucks. But 16 gigs of VRAM on the other GPUs and we should expect in this next generation, in the next generation, that we're probably gonna get 4K no longer in the middle of the stack, but 4K gaming at least 60 FPS is gonna start to trickle down more into what they call the mainstream GPUs. As long as they give those GPUs enough VRAM, that's gonna be the big question. I know there's some question about the 5060 and the 5070, how much VRAM they would get, and there was a lot of details that came out recently, but those were for a laptop. Desktop's a whole different thing, although we do know that probably the memory buses are gonna be quite tight on them, so they may have to do some things like they did this generation, like the 40. 60 Ti and clamshell the memory, which makes GPUs more expensive to produce. And NVIDIA is very happy to pass along the cost to you, the consumer, for something like the 4060 Ti, even though that it's not super fast at the same time. So I actually think that there's a future very, very soon where we're gonna be talking about moving to 4K gaming and AMD is gonna announce the RX 8000 series of GPUs. We expect them to have at least the middle card. It'll be their top end card because they've canceled their top end series, which they couldn't get to work in order to accelerate RDNA 5, their next generation architecture afterwards. But the cards we are gonna get should perform about where a 7900 XT is. And the 7900 XT performs pretty well at 4K right now. We could see 4K gaming capable GPUs. And I'm talking about very good frame rates at ultra details coming out very, very soon in the, what, three to $500 segment. I mean, they're already there right now at the 7800 XT is only, you know, like 479 right now. Imagine that got down into the 300s to push that many frames. Now, obviously, you're still gonna be able to push huge amounts of frames at 1440p. I'm not saying 1440p gaming is gonna be dead, but I think 1440p, gaming slides into where 1080p gaming was maybe a year or two ago, and 4K gaming becomes kind of the next generation. We'll have to see if that means that, that we're gonna have 8K gaming. I know that silly Linus Tech Tip video that they produced with the RTX 3090 was almost announced as like, oh, it's 8K capable. It's like, there's no 8K gaming monitors out there. You're crazy. We'll have to see if 8K is maybe the next thing to come. And then in terms of like cases and fans and everything, there's always some really good announcements at uh, Computex. We saw a lot of really cool stuff at CES, I would expect the same basically. Do know that all the all the partners out there are kind of lining up to make their announcements. And of course, we'll be talking about them here too. So stay subscribed for that. All right, Sean Kerr asked a great question with so many RTX 4070 Ti, I think you mean 4070 Ti super cards on the market. Does it really matter which one you buy? I'm in basically has a very similar question, but they're in India. There's a huge difference between the 4070 Ti super and a 4080. What do I suggest in terms of price to performance? The 4070 Ti super, I think I've said this a number of times is what we should have received as the RTX 4080. I know we had the 4080 16 gigabyte, then the 12 gigabyte, then the 12 gigabyte got unlaunched, and then we had the 4070 Ti in its place, and then we got the 4080 at a ridiculous price of $1,200, and then we got the 4080 Super. All that is a bunch of nonsense as far as I'm concerned. If I were to kind of rename all these cards, I would have named the 4070 Ti Super the 4080 because to me, $800 makes sense as in terms of a price. The 
RTX 3080 was 699 a couple years ago, so the price difference isn't that big. We went from 10 gigabytes of VRAM on the 3080, which at the time seemed a little cheap. It definitely seemed a little cheap for 700 bucks, and it has turned out to be an actually bad decision, unfortunately, for a lot of folks out there. They ended up with a 10 gigabyte VRAM GPU, and just a couple years later, that thing seems ancient. It's really starting to feel ancient, unfortunately. But going to 16 gigs, that's two thumbs up. That's what we really should have gotten on even the 4070 Ti in the first place, probably the 4070 as well. All those GPUs should have gotten 16 gigs. But basically your question of course is, does it matter which one you buy? Not really. I mean, listen, if aesthetically there's a card that you really like out there, maybe you like the Seuss Tough one a lot, maybe you like one of the white cards a, a lot, like the Gigabyte Arrow out there, that is a, a potential reason to spend a little bit more. Some of the cheaper models, uh, like the Ventus out there, the kind of more entry, entry level, I know, entry level $800 GPU, but you know what I'm talking about, the cheaper end, right, the cheaper points of entry cards out there, the coolers are all still quite adequate. I did like the MSI Slim one, if you were looking for a slimmer. Obviously the card is then longer because they just elongated the heat sink and shrunk it down this way. That's another great one, especially if you're looking to kind of vertically mount it in, in your case out there. But I wouldn't necessarily buy like the super overclocked or any kind of liquid cooled 4070 Ti Super. That just seems a little silly to me because the coolers are all adequate for that card. So I would grab any of those cards out there, not really worry about it. Then in in terms of like the 4070 Ti Super versus the 4080, the VRAM is about the same. The performance is not that huge of an uplift between the 4070 Ti Super and the 4080. It's not nothing, it's not nothing. $200 more, will that GPU last you a little bit longer? Possibly, but I, I do suspect that in the future, you're gonna feel like, oh man, the difference between the 4070 Ti Super and the 4080 is this, and the difference between that and like the 5080 or the 5070 is gonna be like this. Though I will say, in terms of per the performance for the 5080, I have serious doubts out there because it can't perform, if they wanna ship this thing into China, it cannot perform as well as the 4090 because the 4090, right now is not shippable into China because of these technology bans out there. So really, if you have the extra 200 bucks, it makes you feel better, go for the 4080 Super or the 4080, they're effectively the same card. Otherwise, I just pulled the trigger on a 4070 Ti Super because the likelihood that we're gonna get another GPU in this price class, I mean, again, wait a couple weeks and see what we have from Nvidia in terms of a Computex announcement, but that's kind of where I'd land. Got a great question about the future of ARC Intel Arc, and I got some good news, potentially good news about Battle Mage 2 thumbs up here. Merc the Wolf, in my last GPU video, I didn't talk very much about Arc's driver issues. Have Arc's GPU drivers been less fidgety? They have been less fidgety. They're getting a lot better. I still think that if you wanna buy one and save the money and you know how to tinker with GPUs a little bit, go right ahead, I would actually feel comfortable. Would I recommend them to somebody who's buying a pre-built gaming PC right now, like, like that audience? No. I would still say go for AMD Radeon or an NVIDIA GPU. In the pre-built market, it's primarily NVIDIA GPUs anyway, although you can find some Intel uh, GPUs out there, but mostly like the ARC A380 GPUs you wouldn't want to buy anyway. However, we did get some good news about uh, ARC Battle Mage. Well, I, maybe not good news, but we negated the bad news, if that makes any sense, because a couple GPU reports ago, I basically reported on the leak that it looked like that Battle Mage, at least the discrete dies had been canceled, but now it looks like that is for discrete dies for laptop and that they are still expecting now to have discrete GPUs for desktop PC. So these are all leaks, they're all rumors, it's, and it's mostly this, these Twitter leakers, it's the same folks every single time. But a little bit of good news on the Battle Mage front, we were expecting, and I, maybe we still are expecting, to get these GPUs before Black Friday this year. So sometime, what, November-ish, maybe uh, late October, sometime in the kind of mid to late fall. I'm super excited because we definitely need that. We need more players in the GPU space. We need more players, more competition, good for consumers. So I'm really happy about that. Jeff's got a great question about overclocking. What are the pros and cons? with the limits of different hardware? Some components seem great, but on others, is it worth your time? Let's start off with, there's basically three things you can overclock that I can think of off the top of my head. 
RAM, your CPU, and your GPU, right? In terms of RAM overclocking, I feel like increasingly not that worth it, except at the ultra high end, if you're not using an X3D CPU. So with like an Intel i9-14900K, 13900K, I mean, it's LOL because now those power limits have been dropped down. It's not clear that actually RAM overclocking is gonna help. And with an RTX 4090, where you are gonna be CPU bound most of the time at like 1080p or 1440p, Yes, then manually, manually overclocking as opposed to just activating XMP or the Expo timing, which is technically overclocking, right? But I think of that as automatic overclocking versus manual overclocking. So manual overclocking, you can get a little bit more performance, especially in gaming, uh, doing that at a risk of instability, obviously. But I think increasingly, at least in this generation, we'll have to see in the next Ryzen 9000, it might all change, who knows? With your CPU, I think AMD, at least with Precision Boost Overdrive, has effectively killed overclocking on their CPUs. You can still do it, but you're not gonna do it as effectively as turning on Precision Boost Overdrive. So why not just turn on Precision Boost Overdrive? That would be my recommendation instead. Instead of trying to spend all this time fiddling with something, you just click Precision Boost Overdrive and there it is. And you are technically overclocking that CPU still, it's just you're automatically overclocking it. Then we get your GPU. So basically uh, with the AMD Radeon software package, you can automatically overclock your GPU as well. It's a one button overclock. Uh, you can also undervolt your GPU. Undervolting your GPU is one area where I think that actually makes some sense and you can pick up the instabilities and I think it's easier to test for instabilities on your GPU, both overclocking it and undervolting it than it is on your CPU side, which I don't typically recommend undervolting your CPU, at least not aggressively, right? Because it's typically the instability that you get is in lightly threaded workloads, not the heavy stress test kind of stuff. So sometimes you'll just get weird stuff going on and a lot of people might not necessarily pin down that, oh, that might be because I've undervolted my CPU. They're just like, oh, something's being weird with my PC right now. What's being weird is that you've undervolted your CPU in such a way that now you're doing just web browsing and it seems like something's going wrong. But on the GPU side, much easier to pin down. Obviously you see artifacts and things like that. Probably more worth it on your GPU. Uh, in terms of being able to overclock, RDNA 3 has been really great to overclock. Ampere less so, but you can still get good performance out of doing it. Uh, that's the RTX 4000 series GPUs. The 4090 has been really good and then each die down, it just seems like it kind of hits a line and that's really why I feel like Nvidia didn't push the power envelope with a lot of those GPUs. There's just not a lot of performance there to get. There's some and you certainly can, especially in some titles that are memory bandwidth type, especially if you overclock the memory on it as well. So I would save the three RAM, probably not worth it. CPU, definitely not worth it. GPU, still worth it. And I guess I know I've promised all y'all an overclocking guide out there. I have a script written for it. it. It will get shot sometime in the near future, hopefully very soon. Ender Gamer asks, are AMD GPUs compatible with ATX 3.0 PSUs? If not, can I still use the PSU? Yes. Not only are they compatible with them, I would prefer people get an ATX 3.0 or now the 3.1. Let's quickly go through this. There's two new standards basically in the deal with power drop from GPUs. Remember some of the GPUs were drawing insane amounts of power for a short period of time, two to three times above what they're supposed to be rated for. And some of the older PSUs, they would trip the protection. Now they are designed to allow components to draw more power than they're rated for but for only short periods of time and they were exceeding that. And so all of a sudden you just have the system just poof, flip off. People didn't know that there was something wrong. They thought there's something wrong with their PSU when in fact it was the GPU was drawing way too much power. That's why we've recommended a significant oversize uh, most of the time, 1.5 times the max rate of drop. But there's two new standards, PCIe 5.0, that relates to anything you plug into a PCIe slot in a motherboard. The main thing being the GPU and how much power it can draw even for short periods of time. So there's a limit that's been put in place. ATX 3.0 is basically that, but on the power supply side. So those two together have created an umbrella to kind of tamp down or at least control some of these GPU power spikes out there so they don't damage the system or just shut them off and things like that. AMD GPUs are absolutely compatible with them. You don't need to worry about that. Lemon Shark asks, any tips on choosing a PEC case? We did a whole video on this for 2023. We'll do an update this year, the best PC cases in 2024. I would check out the old video because in terms of the requirements, they haven't changed a lot. Let's quickly go through them. I would recommend at least two to three intake fans and one exhaust fan. You don't have to get a case with fans in it if you wanna buy your own fans. Just note that it tends to be more expensive to do it that way. Although I will admit, 
you can get a higher quality of fan. The other thing to think about obviously is the size of the case, the size of the case. Make sure you're getting a case appropriately sized. And I would say don't overspend on the case. People often buy cases that end up being money pits in our Boost My Builds. I can't tell you how many times we've corrected builds where they ended up spending on like a thousand or even a $1,200 budget, like $300 once you get the case and the fans and everything in there. And you're like, why did we spend so much on this case? And we make a lot of specific product recommendations. So if you're looking for a great PC case, check that out. And when it's updated, I'll leave the other one linked down in there as well. Remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you check out our GPU market update for this month? We look at all the GPUs right now. Where's pricing been going? What's the best GPU to buy? And what's coming down the pike? Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.